here, Peter. Uh, thanks, everybody. I'm Domenico. Great to see the turnout today. Congratulations to the organizers for putting this all together. Um, and of course, um, I'll be talking about surface water today and how forestry interacts with surface water. And in general, just remind everyone that climate change is real. And uh, one indicator is Dave Pop's not wearing a tube today. <laughs> and it's, it's from April. We all know what I'm talking about there. Thanks. Uh, here we go. So this is the Englishman River system. You've seen some other maps of this sure, earlier today and in this presentation. If you think of the outer edge of that, of course, you're talking about the watershed, the English River watershed, uh, 32 square kilometers, 32,000 hectares. This is the unit that a company like Mosaic considers its landscape level planning. The watershed is the base unit of ecology, and certainly on Vancouver Island, that's as, as applicable as anywhere else. This is where we consider a whole bunch of issues uh, in our planning, wildlife, terrain, road stability, bridges, how we make our arrangements with the Nature Trust, for covenants, the park deals we've done with the regional district and the province over the years. And then there are dozens of sub-bases. These are the bases we, we manage to at the operational level to make sure our harvest levels are dispersed across the landscape and uh, have very, very low risk of impacting large winter peak flows, which are the damaging storms that we suffer here on Vancouver Island. It's those pineapple expresses that come rolling in We've got that data, this is just a little image to show the, we have LIDAR, we have terrain, we have all sorts of inventories of timber and vegetation that help us calculate these things based on well-known government data sets and, uh, and studies, watershed assessment procedure basically. So focusing in on our hydrologic management at a company like Mosaic, I'm just going to take one more minute before the buttons come on to talk about how hydrology is managed how the concept of equivalent cleared area relates to stream flows. So, I described the idea of the uh, upper height of land of the watershed being like the upper end of a funnel. So think of the funnel. Think of the timber in that funnel as a sponge in the funnel. And then you put ice and uh, snow on that sponge and you've got really the conditions we have in our watersheds in the winter time before those pineapple expresses roll through where the temperatures go up and the rain comes down. Those are the peak flows that have the potential to disturb and destabilize streams. This sponge is recovered. This is the fully second growth watershed. Imagine this being 100 hectares. It has 0% cleared area. It is 100% recovered. It is intercepting rain and wind, but there's snow all over this watershed as a normal forest would. Now, if you take 10 hectares, for instance, out of this 100 hectare watershed, say nominally, then your equivalent cleared area is 10%. And there are a whole bunch of graphs and studies that continue to relate what that equivalent cleared area could translate into higher peak flows during those damaging storms we get in the winter here on the coast. So we manage that across our landscape by knowing very, in very high detail at any time what the tree height is on thousands and thousands of polygons in each of those sub-basins. So we manage our equivalent cleared area on the sub-basin level, and that connects very well with all other objectives, such as uh, wildlife and, and drinking water quality as well. This is just an example. This is in the instrument, so we've got some, uh, some farmland where the recovery is zero, ECA is 100%, a recently harvested area, which is also 100%, but this is a recovering, maybe a 20 year old stand, it's intercepting rain and wind 50% as well as a fully recovered or a natural forest would. This is fully recovered, and we add that up and we monitor it every day, and we're very much aware of our uh, effect and how we, as forest managers, should uh, continue to monitor and adapt our policies and continue to work with uh, many of the fine folks in here as well as our partners at the regional district to, to monitor and, and improve. So with that, I'll pass it over to Julie.